Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. Today, I thought we'd have a look at my three nobly types. Now, I used to have more than this, um, including some mounted ones, but um, some, um, well, at least one went to Carol. Um, but this is what I've kept, and I'm standing back here so that you can basically see the size they can get to. Now, you have to bear in mind that when they're sold, they tend to have possibly a couple of juvenile canes, you know, little sort of three inch, four inch ones, maybe six inches long. And then they have a nearly full size cane and what looks like a full size cane. They often have those two canes and they're covered in blooms and that's, that's how they're grown to be sold. And you can't do that. The reason being they are fed with hormones which include growth restrictors so they hold the plant back as far as the height of the canes are concerned and in doing so it induces a mass blooming. Um, I don't know who discovered that but somebody rubbed their hands with glee when they found that out. So in the commercial nurseries where these are grown in bulk for us to, for us to buy um, they have control at that level which we don't have we don't have access to such um things so when we get them the size they are is not necessarily the size they're going to stay and we have some classic <laughs> examples here <laughs> um, so let's go over now i've got these three out i got i was just going to do one i thought actually we'll look at all three because they're all doing different things and they're all at different stages of their life cycle. So we can use these as an example of what any of yours may look like. Yours are going to be a combination of everything that's here, or part of what's here, or a very little of what's here. But in some shape or form, if you've got de nobly dendrobiums, they're going to have a bit of some of this. So, right, first of all, this one. This is... Um, Dendrobium prima donna. I'll put pictures of the um, blooms. Well, not in one case because I've got some, but in the other two. This is about to bloom. This is not necessarily behaving the way it should. Um, it's due a repot, which it will get as soon as it shows signs of growth at the base, um, which I'm hoping to induce. So, what's happened to this then? This once was a uh, first in show. Um, it was a bush. Um, it really was like three foot by three foot, <laughs> massive and covered in blooms. It was an absolute success uh, for that one year only. Now, after that mass blooming, I split it. And I believe I split it into three and two parts went to other people. And I kept the, I kept the small tatty bit, basically, which I've been recovering ever since. Now, last year we had a good bit of recovery because we grew these two canes. Those are two nice canes. This size cane for this nobly, Prima Donna, is not quite as big as it can get. It could get a little bit bigger. You know, I, I know this from, you know, my experience with this actual plant. Um, so what have we got left on the plant then? Well, what we've got are some older canes that are not going to bloom again. That's these two. I know they're not going to bloom again because they're too old and they've used most of the nodes that would have been available. There's another one back there that is probably in the same boat, as are these two. So we've now got five old canes on here that are probably not going to bloom. And if you can make that decision, you might say to yourself, well, why don't we just cut them off then? They're a waste of time. No, they're not. Look at the strength of that plant. It's got two nice new canes, one that's going to bloom. This will then become a non-blooming cane afterwards. It's an old cane. So we will have two canes and five or six older canes. That gives me an imbalance. So I will be able to take a couple of the older canes off, but I wouldn't dream of doing it until the new growth pushes on because all of those canes constitute a whole. That's the resources the plant has to be able to use. 
and hopefully due to the strength of all of those reserves put together it will put up a couple two would be good three would be better new growths and when they get going they will produce new roots which can add to the plant's strength and these old canes which in some cases are starting to shrivel can come off but not until I wouldn't take them off now so that's that one now this time of year you'd expect last year's canes to be producing nubbins not all nobilies have that life have that cycle sometimes the canes have to spend one year growing one year sitting there doing nothing with leaves on and they then go into a winter where some of them start to drop their leaves and they bloom late winter spring that year and that's probably what these two are going to do however this one does surprise attacks and occasionally it'll just bloom in the middle of summer on what would be the previous year's growths that's a wait and see but it never if it does that it never blooms the full extent of the cane it only ever blooms in a couple of places which leaves the rest of them the rest of the places to bloom at the proper time <laughs> right so that's that one now we'll have a look at this what is a tatty looking object but a lot of that is uh, again it's old canes and it's um <laughs> it's got it's that's the pot it's wedged in this big pot with a huge rock jammed in between this pot and this pot down the bottom to stop the flipping thing falling over uh, I mean I've tried to strap it up and you know keep it central but uh, it decides to do its own thing now this one produced a funny little cane last year let's see if we can get to it that's this one here it didn't grow to full size it stopped short now I can't remember whether that stopped short because we went into winter and it ran out of time or not I can't remember but it grew this one this one and this one so this produced three new growths last year and we have some older growths on here and let's have a look at these older growths we've got a very old one here that, that I'm using to strap this one too to stop it flopping and that is a very old one it's very wrinkled and if you look at the nodes they've been used so that cane is now not going to bloom again this one however might do because although it's bloomed up here it hasn't bloomed here or here yet and it's still got some leaves on that could bloom yeah it's an old one and then we come on to all the others are leafless canes these are of no use at all because they've shriveled yeah if you look they've all sucked in so they have no life in them this one has so has this one and so has these two so they still and this one's even got a leaf on it so blooms 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 unlikely to bloom this one blooms hasn't bloomed down here it might do <laughs> definitely not over here again blooms 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 that's not going to bloom ever again same over here look at the bloom stubs so these two are never going to bloom this one might not not definitely not and definitely not <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so why isn't this in bloom then these two canes grew last year they finished as we went into winter at the proper time again they may need to go through a year with leaves on maturing and supporting the new growths to bloom at the end of the next winter they might bloom in the summer they might bloom half of each yeah got no guarantees they don't always behave themselves right now over here is my youngest one and this should have been a named variety from Jeff Han's collection um, literally had it been what it had said on the label it would have been a stunning nobly 
I've forgotten what it was called now, but I was so annoyed when it came into bloom for the first time because it's just totally, it should have been shades of peachy, orange and pinks. If you can imagine pinks, very delicate pinks through peachy colours and some yellows, a bit like um, the Cattleya apple blossom, yeah? And big flowers. So that should have been absolutely stunning. And then when it opened its first blooms, it wasn't what it said on the label. So I was very disappointed. Nonetheless, it's, yeah, it's a nice healthy plant. It's grown on okay. So these are the canes that it has produced in the past, probably ones I inherited. This cane is blooming here. It has already bloomed there, there, there. And so it's not gonna bloom again. These are immature canes down here. They're not gonna bloom. But look at the cane that I grew last year compared with what was there before. So this is what the plant should be doing. That's the size it should get to. Now this cane has got nubbins coming. So this, this one's gonna come into bloom. Now at the moment it's showing those three. Oh no, there's one there as well. So at least four nubbins on there and it can have two, three or four blooms. Um, now this hasn't been repotted since I got it, so I'm seriously thinking of, again, when the new growth comes and the new roots push out, we'll think about doing it. But I know that um, it, it probably hasn't been in that pot too long. I can't think when we collected Jeff's plants. But um, Marius took the Dendrobium collection, the, you know, which was um, going to be the national collection effectively, home with him, and he then proceeded to repot and relabel everything. So it would have been repotted at that point. I just can't remember when that was. That's the heater just come on. So anyway, what you're looking at at this time of year is nubbins that will become blooms. And if you've got nub, oh, let me just turn that off. <laughs> that on my back is really cold. That's <laughs> what I said about fans. You know, if they're too strong, they're not airflow anymore, they're drafts. Um, but that's got the heater directly under it, which can run on its own for a bit. Um, yeah, so this time of year, your nobly should be thinking about blooming. Now, they might be, just be thinking about it. They might already be doing it, or they might be going to do it very soon. But this is basically the nobly season for blooming. End of January through to probably the end of April, May time. Um, some start later than others. And at some point, you should get new growths. Now that can depend on the, the, the individual plant and its makeup. Um, some will produce new growth at weird times of year, like in the autumn. You think, well, what am I supposed to do with that then? <laughs> well, good luck. <laughs> they can behave oddly, but in the main, the growth pattern is blooms first, followed by new growths, feed and water well, and keep the plant relatively shaded during that growth period. Grow those canes on as best you can, quite heavy feed, frequently get them going. And hopefully those canes will reach maturity as you go into autumn, heading towards winter, when you can slow the whole thing down again. Um, that, that would be the normal process. And quite honestly with the hybrids, if you don't get that close to that set cycle, they'll probably still bloom anyway. <laughs> But the closer you get to the species, the more you have to get that right, basically, or you won't get the blooms or you won't get many. So anyway, that's a look at some nobilies and um, what they're up to. Um, I'm waiting for all three to produce new growths. This one has got to be repotted. That is a solid mass of roots in old media. So that's gonna be a bit of a pig to repot, it's a very large plant. Um, this one, I'll have to look at some records and see if I can work out how long it's been in that um, pot. But it would have been potted in good quality bark and it's got some grow stones in there, some lecker. So it's a bit, bit of a mix, but uh, it, it's perfectly fine. And if it's not old, then it can probably stay in there another year. We'll wait and see.
This one desperately needs a repot. It's another one that's um, got a pot full of roots. Now, quickly on the end of this one, the theory of potting your dendrobiums in the smallest pot possible, keeping them cramped up because they do better. Yes and no. <laughs> they can do better potted like that. But the real reason, through my experience, is they will do just as well in a larger pot if you control the watering, especially through the winter. That's where the problem comes in. When the plant is not actively growing, it's effectively dormant, it's sitting there waiting for some longer days and a bit of warmth to start its cycle again. And in a big pot during that period, if you pour your water on like you do in the summer when you're feeding and watering well, you'll rot the roots because they're not growing. Nothing's happening with the plant. So that's the reason for the small pot is it's almost impossible to overwater a small pot that's full of roots because you just can't get enough water in there to overwater it or to keep it soggy. So the small pot, if you're a heavy waterer, a bit heavy handed with the old watering can, then a smaller pot will suit you better because it will stop you getting that plant too wet during the dormant months. Um, but I'm quite happy with larger pots on the grounds that, you know, I've been doing the winter dendrobium stuff for long enough now I can look at a pot across the grow room and think well you're not getting any water <laughs> yeah. but that's what it comes down to really having plenty of room for those roots to expand and get a really big root system is, is a benefit a benefit to the plant restricting the root system I can't see as that's a benefit to the plant it might be a benefit to its overall health on the grounds that you don't kill it through overwatering or keeping it soggy or whatever. So uh, anyway, <clears throat> nobilies. Um, this is a typical typical nobly flower, upside down. <laughs> Hang on, let me just turn around. This one's up the right way, sort of, sideways on. Um, this goes back to my feeding again. Again, tagged on the end. I've been feeding with the K-Lite from halfway through last year. These blooms are small. They should be bigger than that. And I found that with most things that have flowered, say from October onwards, anything that's come into flower during that period has had smaller blooms and less of them. So I'm going to say that is because of the feed I was using. I can't prove it though. <laughs> it's not scientific. It's just me going on what those plants did before using the standard MSU compared with what they've done since I changed. So that's what's happened for me. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we're back to using the, the um, MSU as originally defined. Um, and this season on some plants, I will probably be feeding heavier to try and put them back on track because a lot of them have produced smaller growths you know, we've had some rotten, rotting growth. That could be just the temperature. It could be a combination, but we shall see. So I'm going to go back to doing things the way I used to, apart from the fact I won't water as often because I haven't got the heat that I used to have around the other place. So the pots won't dry out as quick, even in the full growing season. So anyway, see you next time. Thanks for dropping by. If you're not subscribed, it would be nice if you did so. And don't forget the old thumbs up. It all helps the channel. Bye for now.